is now secured. Okay. Hello everybody. Many thanks for the positive feedback on my videos. I hope nobody is following me. So, are you up for some creative sampling? If that's a yes, prepare a cup of coffee or tea, or even better, grab a nice ice cold beer and let us experiment. Today you're in for a shock. It will be seismic. Now I'm joking. But, but, not only will I show you some secret contact techniques, I'll also show you my favorite effect in contact and how I use it to get results pretty fast. As a side note, you might wonder, Chromo, why do you always show us how to build instruments with one or two samples? Well, for two reasons. Reason number one, it makes it easy for me to demonstrate the concepts. And secondly, it demonstrates the power of sampling even with just a handful of samples. But I encourage you to apply the concepts I demonstrate in these videos to more samples. Have you cracked that beer open? For this video, let's construct an imaginary scenario so that we have a framework to work with. Imagine you've just been to a spotting session with a director. If you don't know what the spotting session is, uh, Google it. No, I'm joking. A spotting session is when the director and the composer meet and discuss the artistic concept, uh, what the music should do, uh, and then they spot different scenes. The director tells you that it's about a person that lost the plot in life. Now, confused and alone, he wanders around the city, being an observer to his own demise. The director says, Listen up, Cromo. It's an emotional sad story that emphasizes the hustle and bustle and the anonymity of a big city. I want something emotional, like strings, a lonely voice, perhaps, and a noisy city soundscape. I want a signature sound and a tune for this crucial scene that will be the basis for the movie score. Cromo. I want an Oscar, an Emmy, a Novello Award, and a Bordello Award. I want it all. Make it happen. You compliment the director on this great vision and the breakthrough ideas while not rolling your eyes in boredom. And you leave the spotting session. Your musical editor and your orchestrator are on holidays. Now what? What do you do? You lie to everybody that you have a PhD in um, composition and psychoacoustic engineering, it would require some sort of divine intervention. And suddenly, you hear a voice. You only need four samples. Huh? Sample one, you need a long, high violin note played with emotion and rebowing. I can use my 39 euro violin. Okay. Go on. Sample two. You need the serenity of the wind through nature. Possible, very possible. Mm -hmm. More? Sample three, you need city sounds. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And sample four, you need a high note of a human voice. Really? Well, if I must, here we go. I hope I didn't scare the birds. And that, my dear fellows, requires quite the courage to ridicule yourself in front of thousands of subscribers. You only have 600. Just let me live out my dreams. Back to the studio. Let's see what we can do with these four samples. Here I have contact open and we can audition our samples. This is the wind through nature. City sounds. Violin. And the voice. Okay, okay, enough of the voice. Now I'm going to create a new instrument in contact by double clicking and then giving the friendly ranch icon a click to enter the sampling engine. 
Now, if I'm moving relatively fast through the different sections of contact, watch my overview contact in 999 seconds, links above in the description. I'm going to activate the group editor and the mapping editor, and I'm going to rename group one to violin. I'm going to drop it on C3, and then I'm going to use the tuning fork in contact. It appears to be A3, so I'm going to move it to A3, which will be the root node, and then I'm going to extend the range. As simple as that. As it stands, it's streaming direct from disk, DFT. That's how the sampling engine is set to. I want to change this to sampler mode, which loads the whole sample into the memory. I don't worry running out of RAM because we are only working with limited amount of samples. Like this, it allows flexibility in the things that we are going to do now. Now, if we activate the wave editor, we can see the waveform of the violin here. I want it to start into the sample and I want it to finish before the sample ends. So I adjust my start and end positions. I also want to create a loop and I'm going to use the sample loop section here and I'm going to activate one loop and I can regulate the start and the end of the loop using these numbers here or I can drag the start and end positions of the loop and here I'm going to set the loop to play back and forth until release so when it reaches the end of the sample it will reverse back and trust me, violin sounds like a violin even if you reverse it. You won't listen to any secret messages if you play it backwards. As you can see, every time I play a note, it starts from the same position here. Now, this will become monotonous really fast. To add some kind of randomness, I will modulate the sample start. I think I mentioned in my previous video that I love modulating the sample start. I'm going to use this modulation button here to open the modulation matrix and I'm going to assign a new modulator that is random. We have two options, the random unipolar and the random bipolar. Although I have bipolar tendencies, I prefer using the random unipolar here, meaning that it will create a random number between zero and one, as opposed to the random bipolar that will generate a number between minus one and one. So we'll use random unipolar and I'm going to modulate sample start. Now, every time I press on a key, The more I increase the slider, the more it will cover the whole length of the sample. And now, if I let it to the end, you'll see that it will reverse back. This way, even if you play chords, each note of the chord will have a different start position within the length of the sample. And this will provide an unpredictable and a very organic experience. The next thing I'm going to do now is just check my amplifier section here which controls the volume of the sample. There is already an envelope assigned and the velocity controls the volume. I wanted to control it a little bit more so I increase this magnitude uh, slider and then I move down to the envelope. I'm going to increase the attack, make it a cinematic 600 milliseconds. We have our violin patch. Now, I want to do exactly the same thing for the voice. To make my life easier, I'm going to right-click on the violin group and I'll duplicate the groups. I will rename this to voice. I will disable edit all groups so you can edit each group individually. I will group solo so that I can listen only to the group I'm working on and I'm going to select selected groups only so I can view the zones within the individual groups. So now I'm going to move to the voice group. I'm going to choose the violence sample, delete it and drop the voice. Okay, it's a B3. So I'm going to drag it to B3. Then I'm going to extend the range. Great. A lot of the violin group settings have been copied to the voice group. 
The only thing I will change in the voice group layer is the attack. I want the attack to be relatively fast. Great. So now for the secret sauce. Let me close the wave editor and the mapping editor. If I click on the violin group, you can see in its amplifier section that the output is set on default. I want to select bus one. I will click the voice group and I will set it to bus two. You can view buses as little audio channels where the output of each group can be routed to. Now, where are the buses? Let's open now here our instrument buses and you'll see that you have bus one and bus two. Bus one will affect the violin sound and bus two will affect the voice sound. We can treat the different groups independently when it comes to effects, in specific sound effects. So I will add from the utilities a send levels which is a module that receives the send effect output. I'll also select bus 2 and assign a send levels. Now there is nothing to be seen here because we have no send effects. So let's add some send effects. The first thing I'm going to do is inactivate the send levels from the insert effects because we don't want the send effects twice. Then I'm going to go to my send effects and I am going to add a convolution. Actually, I'm going to add three convolutions. Do not worry, contact is very good, especially its convolution is very CPU efficient, I find. Now we have three convolutions. If we go back to our instrument buses, you'll see now that we have three convolution knobs plus the amplifier module of the bus. The beauty of this approach is that we can regulate the volume of the dry signal using this volume control of the amplifier and individually the different convolutions. Like this, we can mix the different signals independently to create a sound that we want. But now let's talk about convolution because usually people think of convolution in terms of convolution reverb. I want you to look at it in a slightly different way. For this, we have to revisit our previous um, video, The Secret of 128 Levels, where I talked about the fast Fourier. Carl Gauss, briefly, the Fourier framework dictates that every complex sound is made up of a series of sine waves. What convolution does is imagine now the sine waves of one sound being multiplied by the sine waves of the other sound. The auditory end result will be filtering one sample through the frequencies of another sample. So you will get the characteristic of both sounds. For example, in this case, a violin or a voice sample, and you are filtering it through a wavetable of frequencies that are characterized by another sample. In our case, either the wind through nature or the city sounds. Let's see how this works I'm going to choose my first convolution here and I'm going to drag the city sounds. I'm just going to use the default settings and just drag and drop the sample inside here. The other thing I'm going to do is activate this volume envelope because if you don't activate the envelope and you press on a note, the sound will go on and on and on because this convolution sample is 5.20 seconds. So I'm going to activate the volume envelope and I'm going to adjust my volume envelope. Great. Now I'm going to select convolution 2 and I'm going to drop in the wind through nature. Great. And now the third convolution, I'm going to go into the presets that come together with contact, which are very interesting. I'm going to go in the real rooms and um, select the concert hall A. Now we have the hall. Now watch this. If I play 
a note you hear nothing using this amplifier volume I control the dry signal the first convolution will control the CT sound convolution the second will control the wind through nature convolution the third will control the concert hall so let's start mixing So we created a sound by using a series of convolution reverbs or convolution processing and a little bit of the dry signaling. Now let's go to our violin bus, which is bus one. We have the same controls here. I'm going to select my violin group. And now let's mix and match the violin sound. Now I'm adding the city scape convolution a little bit of the wind so now we adjusted to taste our violin I'm going to unsolo the group so they can play together now let's give it a try Like this, we created a signature sound from one shitty voice, one shitty violin note, and a couple of ambient noises. Now I'm going to adjust and tweak these parameters to create um, maybe two patches, and then we'll use those to score the crucial scene the director was talking about. So I created three kind of patches from the same sounds using the same instrument, just tweaking the levels of the convolution and the dry signals. Uh, let me show them to you. This is uh, our first one. Second. Third. And then we can layer them together, play them at the same time. So let's use them to score. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the creative process. The beauty of this approach is that you can use only a handful of convolutions, but you can affect many groups without stressing your CPU. Another advantage of this technique is that even the most boring samples can become very cinematic. And the most important aspect is that you can embed the textures that you want subconsciously in the minds of your listeners. Your audience will not consciously pick up the cityscape or the wind sounds, but subconsciously they will feel it because the frequencies are embedded in there. I hope you found value in this video and I really hope that you go out and try these techniques yourself because they're relatively easy to try. 
Next time we'll try something different. Until then, remain happy. All right. <laughs>